everybody. Ron Metchis here again. Uh, but a couple of years ago, I bought a meteorite that I had knew nothing about. It's an iron, and I know it came out of Morocco. And I've always wanted to cut it open, but I don't have a saw. So this past February, I visited Tober Spinato at his meteorite mansion. He said he had some saws that were capable of cutting iron. So he said, bring it along. We'll cut it up. So I went there, and uh, the saw that they had... The blades were kind of dull, and they couldn't change it out to a new blade for some reason. So Chris Monk agreed to kindly cut it in half for me. And it just came back yesterday. So here's the rock. It's in two pieces now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these, and I'm going to polish and etch these to see what it is. I know nothing about this. All I know is it came out of Morocco, and it was found in 2021. So you know as much as I know. So let's get on with finding out what this is. It's a mystery meteorite. And we found at least a few details out of it. Here we go. So I'm setting up to do my first sanding. I'm going to use some 320 grit sandpaper to get the rough surfaces down. I've already done this one. It came out pretty good. I got all the burrs off, all the, the edge where the two pieces fell apart. There's always a little shoulder to get off. So this one's nice and smooth and it's all set to go. So the second one I still have to do. So I'm gonna this is gonna take a few minutes, so now this is the paper's pretty worn out, so I'm gonna just I think do this for a few minutes and go on and get a new piece of paper. Let's see how we got here. Well, actually not in bad shape. Got some scratches on there, it'll come off with the finer sanding. But I gotta get that little shoulder off. So it's gonna take me a little bit. I finished the second piece. I got off all those round scratches. So I think we're ready to go on to the next finer grit sandpaper. Nice and smooth. There's no shoulders. Everything's nice and flat. So all I gotta do now is keep on polishing it. The next finer grit I'm going to do is 400 grit. You can see it right there. This is from a sanding wheel, so they don't have any f square paper, but it does the same job, so I'm going to do that next. All right, I'm done with the 400 grit sanding. came out pretty nice. It's starting to get a little more reflective. You can see me looking at it in the camera. That's one piece. The other piece is just the same. So we are getting close. My next grit will be 600. On the sanding so let's get to it so for the next part of sanding i'm gonna wear a glove i'm starting to sand my skin off it's starting to hurt so let's get to that all right so here we go well this is probably gonna take me a while so i'm not gonna bore you with all the details so we'll just pause the camera here and show the results okay we're done with the 600 grit get a little shinier now I have to see myself better in there. Both pieces are about the same. So next, we're going to move on to 800 grit. All right, we're done with the 800 grit paper. It's now getting truly reflective. It's getting much shinier now. In both pieces. I even hit a little trick of, instead of holding the sandpaper down with my hand, I used a little bit of painter's tape. So I'm getting a little clever. So next is uh, 1500. It's getting shiny. Well, I'm all set with my 1500 grit paper. My two pieces ready to go. Everything's all taped down. And let's hit it. Well, we spent a lot of time on the 1500 grit. And I think the results speak for themselves. Nice and shiny. You can see clearly the reflections. And this is about as high a grit as I want to go. Go too much higher, it really is a point of diminishing returns. And you got to leave something for the acid to grab onto when you go into the etching process. So I think we're good to go. On to the next step, etching. All right, we're also up to start etching. Now, as the etchant, we're going to be using some ferric chloride. I've already poured a small amount into a little container inside the boob plastic bin that can contain all the fluids if there's any spills. I have some distilled water to wash the unit off later. 
I have some baking soda to neutralize the acid. A little brush to brush it on. And of course, got my two pieces ready to go. So without further ado, let's get busy. This is so quick, you only get one take. Let's get started. So to protect my hands from the acid, I'm wearing some latex gloves. So hopefully you can see this as it etches. It's a really fast operation. So let's do it. I'm really excited to see what this one's going to turn out. And here comes the etching pattern. Looks like it's a coarse pattern. Yeah, it's doing real nice. Now, a trick I learned from another person that does the etching is if you wash the first coat off, Here's what it's coming like so far. You can start to see the pattern there. And then do it a second time. It really brings out the, the grain structure. Look at, oh yeah. Really makes it almost three dimensional. Wow. I'm not gonna take it any more than two times. I don't wanna end up burning this piece. Get all around. Okay, I think that's all we're going to take that one. Let's wash it off again. And there we have it. Spectacular. I really like this one. Wow. Okay, let's do the other one. Number two, notice how shiny it is. There's no pattern whatsoever. Here we go. Look how fast it starts etching. It's already taking it. This is so fast. It's amazing. I've done this a bunch of times. It just never fails to amaze me how fast an iron will etch. Okay, let's do the wash off business. And hit it a second time. Oh man, that's beautiful. This is almost like magic. more and we'll call it a day okay that should be good enough wash it off and here's the second piece spectacular yeah there's nothing like a fresh Patina, not patina, fresh etch pattern. Put them together. Outstanding. Okay, now we're going to neutralize the acid next. All right, so I'm going to neutralize the acid real quick. So I'm going to just pour it into this little bucket since it's already got water in it. And wash that later, but let's. There. Now the fun part is when you pour in the baking soda. This is really interesting. It just kind of foams up. Yeah. Oh man. I think I overdid it. <laughs> oh well. That's what this blue bucket's for. So that is that as far as the etching goes. I finished up processing the meteorite halves. I dried them out and put a protective coating of this automotive clear coat on there to give it a protective finish. So the results, I think, speak for themselves. It came out pretty spectacular. Not bad for something I didn't know what it was, and it was actually kind of ugly. So this has uh, been a fun project.
It's a long time in the making. So with that, I think we'll wrap it up, and we'll see you on the next project.